When most people think of Southwest Harbor, Maine, they think of summer vacations, the nearby mountains, and boat yards. But NASA knows this small coastal town for something else. It's home to Peter Homer, the first winner of a NASA Centennial Challenges competition. The Centennial Challenges program is part of a larger effort of NASA's Innovative Partnerships program. It's designed to tap into innovative thinking from small teams and individuals the agency might not attract through traditional procurement methods. In early 2006, Mr. Homer saw a press release about the Astronaut Glove Challenge online. There was a challenge to design and build an airplane, you know, to fly. Um, there was a challenge to build a rocket to fly. And I thought, well, that'd be fun, but I don't know if I can quite fit that into my garage. But I saw the glove challenge, and um, it, it fit the parameters of scale, that I, something that I thought I could do on my own. Spacesuit gloves have to be strong enough to protect astronauts while withstanding the internal pressure of an Earth-like atmosphere. Like car tires, they stiffen when inflated. The lack of flexibility can rapidly lead to fatigue in astronauts' hands and arms. Using the gloves during long spacewalks can also lead to bruises, blisters, and cuts, even ripped off fingernails. A little discomfort, you know, they're going to overcome that. But um, the same astronaut has to put the gloves on the next day and go back to work, as, as I like to say, and that's where it gets hard. Peter Homer knew that he had his work cut out for him, but as the date for the competition drew near, he was still struggling. I spent about nine months doing that sort of paper design and thinking about it, coming up with ideas, and um, that's the design that didn't work. And so I learned that I needed to, you know, if, if I followed that approach, I wasn't going to have anything um, three months later, which is about all the time I had. That's when he decided to take a radically different approach. I started putting little strips of tape on my hand and, and uh, tried a few different things that didn't work, and I came up with this one design where I could, with all this tape wrapped around my hand, I could close my hand into a fist and open it. And I couldn't even feel the tape. It just moved with me, yet it was in a configuration that I needed. And that was sort of a breakthrough for me in that I realized that I found a way to, to achieve that flexibility and still restrain the pressure. Sitting at his antique sewing machine, Mr. Homer focuses attention on how to make the fingers. Most attempts didn't work but every failure taught him a little bit more. After each success, he moved to the next section of the glove, testing each new version in a homemade vacuum test stand. Just hours before the competition, Mr. Homer turned off his sewing machine and drove to Windsor, Connecticut. It was time for a hand-to-hand -hand competition with some of the foremost space glove experts in the country. But he knew that even if no one bested NASA's phase six glove, the space agency would still be a winner. All these competitors are competing for a prize. Each is putting their own money or, or their investors' money into the work. And when you add it all up, you generally see, you know, some multiple of the prize amount spent in R&D. Uh, is in essence, you know, free work or highly leveraged. So for a $100,000 prize, you might see a million dollars worth of total investment. Mr. Homer's glove survived preliminary lead checks. Then it passed the pressure burst test. Finally, his homemade space glove bested NASA's own glove and the rest of the competition with its flexibility and mobility. For his winning entry, Mr. Homer was awarded a $200,000 prize. After the competition, he returned to Southwest Harbor to start his own company, which is focused on developing more flexible space suit elements based on his glove and streamlining the production of made-to-fit space suits. But he returned to that small coastal town with more than that he returned with the satisfaction of creating and sharing a real hands-on solution to one of human space exploration's toughest challenges.